Welcome back to bilingual e lectures for diploma students on civil engineering in the subject structural engineering, unit 4 RCC columns and column is a compression member, predominantly the compressive loads will be acting on it and in general columns are vertical members which will transfer the load to the ground. And uh, strut is another uh, classification for a column, it is also a compression member which carries compressive load, but it may be at an inclined position and these strut members you can see in the roof trusses. And as per the class 25.1.1 of IS 456 2000, the compression member is defined as one whose effective length exceeds three times the least lateral dimension, then that means the effective length should be greater than that of uh, three times of the least lateral dimension. And a compression member whose effective length is less than three times the least lateral dimension, then that part of the member is defined as a pedestal. And all these columns and the pedestal you can see in a framed structure. A framed structure is a structure which is constructed on a column beam concept and the beam is supporting the slab or in other words slab load is transferred to the beam, beam load is transferred to the column and column load is transferred to the pedestal and finally, it is to reach the footing and it has to go to the ground. So, these type of constructions are called as a framed structure and predominantly the columns will carry compressive loads, it may be axial or it may be eccentric on one axis or eccentric on both the axis. So, the failure on the compression member or the column member will be of uh, three modes, one is pure compression failure and the other one is combined compression and bending failure, third one is failure by elastic instability. And the failure of column depends on its effective length and the lateral dimension or in other words it depends mainly on the slenderness ratio. So, slenderness ratio plays an important role and it is the ratio between the effective length and the least lateral dimension or lateral dimension of the column and also the failure depends on the support conditions of the member. The classifications of columns of course, based on the type of loading columns are classified as axially loaded column, then that means load is passing through its axis, column with uniaxial eccentric load and column with biaxial eccentric load. Column with uniaxial and column with biaxial and column with biaxial eccentric load you can see the corner columns of any structure or any building structure. Suppose if this is a And of course, this corner column will be subjected to an eccentric loading on, on both the axis that is on x x axis always as well as on y y axis. So, this column this corner column is subjected to a biaxial eccentric load in the sense this column will be subjected to axial load plus the additional moments on both the axis. So, this column is a critical column and based on the slenderness ratio the columns are classified as short columns and long columns. Short columns are defined as or designated as if the slenderness ratio is less than 12, then that is a short column. Again slenderness ratio is the ratio between the effective length and its least lateral dimension. If the value is less than 12, then these two I mean columns are to be classified as short columns and the short column fails by crushing and the other classification is long column. 
when the slenderness ratio about any one of the axis is greater than 12 this value is important 12 then the column is classified as a long column it fails by buckling of course buckling you might have come across the meaning of buckling if this is the member and this is the support and this is the support if it is subjected to loading then the buckling will occur like this buckling is nothing but the deviation in the original configuration to the configuration obtained after the application of load so this deviation is known as buckling and unsupported length of the column of course it is height of the column taken as a clear height between the end restraints that is unsupported length of a column and effective length depends on the bracings and end conditions and the end conditions in the sense the support conditions effective length is an equal and length of a axially loaded compression member which is having fringe hinged ends of the same buckling effect so that is effective length and here the effective length is calculated by multiplying the unsupported length by a factor and for the calculation of effective length one can refer the tabular column given in the IS 4562000 and based on the support conditions support condition in the sense a fixed support a hinged support and a roller support and a free end. A fixed support is a support which restrains translation as well as rotation. Translation is in the sense the horizontal movement as well as the vertical movement is restrained or prevented then those types of supports are called as fixed supports I repeat. If a support restrains the horizontal movement and vertical movement as well as the rotational movement then the support is to be classified as a fixed support. Hinged support it allows rotation but it prevents the translation that is called hinged support. A roller support again it allows rotation and it allows horizontal movement but it restricts the vertical movement then that is called roller support. So, based on these types of support conditions the effective length of the column will vary and based on these support conditions the theoretical value of effective length is given in the IS code book one has to refer that and we have to pick the value of effective length from the table and use that in the design. For the different cases of course it is given here for braced for unbraced the effective length ought to be calculated by using this codal provisions noted here and this is a tabular column extracted from the IS 4562000. If the ends of the column both ends are fixed the effective length is given as 0.65 L this L is unsupported length and if one end is fixed and the one end is hinged then the effective length is 0.80 L similarly if both ends are hinged it is 1 L and one end fixed and one end free is 2 L and there is other uh, criteria one have to bear in their mind is slenderness limits. The column dimension should be selected in such a way that it fails by material failure only and not by buckling and to ensure this slenderness limits plays an important role and the code recommends the clear distance between the restraints that is unsupported length should never exceed 60 times the least lateral dimensions of the column that is the unsupported length should not be greater than 60 times the least lateral dimension. So, that is the slenderness limit for a column if it is of unbraced column it is recommended that the above value is limited to 30 then that means the clear distance between the restraints that is unsupported length should never be exceed never exceed 30 times the least lateral dimension. So, first one is for the braced column this is for the braced column and the second one is for the unbraced column. So, these are the slenderness limits and to illustrate that or 
this has a cross section of a column breadth b and depth d this is the major axis x x and this is a minor axis y y and for the unbraced column the unsupported length should never exceed 60 times I mean 30 times this is a here it is given there and for cantilever columns in addition to the above restriction the clear height should also not exceed the value of L that is 100 B square by D where D is the depth of the cross section this one depth of the cross section measured in the place under consideration and B is the width of the cross section and the slenderness ratio is the ratio between the effective length and the lateral dimension. Slenderness ratio about x x axis is measured like this slenderness ratio about x x lambda x denoted by lambda x is equal to L effective in the x direction divided by the perpendicular dimension that is d. Similarly, slenderness ratio about y y axis is equal to L e y by b and minimum eccentricity is to be checked for the application of compressive loads. All the columns shall be designed for the minimum eccentricity value prescribed in the code. So, the minimum eccentricity is given by this expression E min is equal to or minimum eccentricity is equal to L by 500 plus D by 30, but it should be restricted to 20 mm where L is the unsupported length and D is the lateral dimension in the plane of bending and for non regular and non non rectangular and non circular cross sectional shapes code recommends the minimum eccentricity as L e by 300 or 20 mm it is not 200 mm it is to be raised 20 mm there is a small correction 20 mm whichever is greater. When the eccentricity does not exceed 0.05 times the lateral dimension the load may be assumed as axial. See all these eccentricities are to be checked for arriving at the design strength of the column when it is subjected to axial. In practical it is not possible to predict the application of load whether it passes through its centroidal axis or not. So, there may be some deviation in the application of load. So, therefore, the code recommends the minimum eccentricity value is 20 mm and which has to be restricted to 0.05 times of the lateral dimension. If this actual eccentricity is less than this value, then this eccentricity value may be ignored and therefore, the load is assumed to be acting as axial. And as far as the reinforcement of RCC column is concerned, code prescribes the area of longitudinal reinforcement shall not be less than 0.8 percent nor more than 6 percent of the gross area of the column. Then that means, minimum area of steel to be used or main bars to be used in the column is 0.8 percent of the gross area of the column and the maximum area of steel to be used in the column is 6 percent of the gross area of the column. But in practical cases, the reinforcement bars the vertical bars are to be overlapped. So, the area of steel should not exceed 4 percent of the gross area of the column and the other criteria prescribed in the code is this for a rectangular or a square shape columns minimum 4 bars are to be provided one in each corner and for a circular column it is 6 for square or rectangular it is 4 and for circular column it is 6 bars and size of longitudinal bars the minimum diameter to be used is 12 mm. So, the size of the longitudinal bars in a column shall not be less than 12 mm and the maximum permitted spacing of longitudinal bars it is bars along the periphery of the column is 300 mm and the nominal cover for the reinforcement bars shall not be less than 40 mm. And in column of size 200 mm or less where the diameter of the main longitudinal bars do not exceed 12 mm a nominal cover of 25 mm may be sufficient. For, for smaller scale residential building we used to have only 9 inch square columns that means 230 by 230 column wherein we used to provide only 12 mm dia bars 
in that case we can have a cover of 25 mm. In all other cases the minimum cover of the column should be 40 mm and of course, this nominal cover depends on the codal provision and also it depends on the normal atmospheric exposure condition. As per the code recommendation we have to give the cover for the reinforcements and of the nominal cover prescribed in the code is in table number 16 of IS 456-2000 this is very important to note. And as far as the transverse reinforcement that is lateral direction reinforcement, the lateral direction reinforcement ought to be provided in the form of lateral ties may be in the shape of a rectangle or may be in the shape of a I mean a square or circular rings are to be provided in RC columns to give effective lateral support to the longitudinal bars against buckling. So, all these reinforcements are provided to give the effective lateral support to the longitudinal bars against buckling that is the main objective of the transverse reinforcement and transverse reinforcements are nothing but the lateral ties. Nama Mesrihal Bashila Chulra Dharanda a ring in Chulwanga, but Nama on the ring in Chulakuda as technical person we used to say that as lateral tie. And arrangement of transfer reinforcements, transverse reinforcements and code prescribes the lateral ties diameter as well as the pitch. Diameter evolver lateral ties or diameter evolver render condition and the render condition lay either Adiyam or Ko other to Kravendi Darkonama. So, first condition is one fourth diameter of the largest longitudinal bar and the second condition is 6 mm, whichever is greater. Um, other the um, main reinforcement, Kala thought a main reinforcement la Adiyam Pacha diameter rod in Erko and the diameter la one hundred and all baham, Kal baham, Erthitina, another order value. In our value on the RMM, either in the Adiyamarko, and the value the Ning lateral tie or diameter at the Kurno, and the diameter the Ninga on the answer of Kurukundarko, prescribe Panandidarko. And the second parameter is the pitch, pitch is nothing but the vertical distance. Suppose if this is these are the main rods or the lat longitudinal rods and these are the lateral ties of course there is a there is a cover in the column of course these cover are for main rods, this is the main bar or longitudinal bar and these are the lateral ties and this distance is known as the pitch distance. So, the vertical spacing between the lateral ties is known as pitch. So, pitch should be the least of the three conditions prescribed in the code first condition is the least lateral dimension of the column and second condition is the 16 times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar and the third condition is 300 mm. So, least lateral dimension usually in rectangular columns maybe this is say for an example 230 mm let me say this is 450 mm here the least lateral dimension is 230 mm and the 16 times the smallest longitudinal bar uh, let us assume this column is reinforced with uh, 4 numbers of 16 and uh, 2 numbers of 12 mm. Then the smallest longitudinal bar is 12 mm. So, 16 times this is k first condition is 230 mm, second condition is 16 times of the smallest one 12, 2, 192 mm here this is 230 mm and the C last one is 300 mm. So, the least one is 192 mm. So, the pitches minimum is 192 mm and this is to be rounded off to 
190 mm for practical purposes. So, that is how you have to find out the pitch of the lateral ties for the axially loaded RCC columns. When increased load is allowed on a column, then the columns are provided with uh, helical type of ties. Helical ties of course, it is a three dimensional tie. So, helical tie of course, So, it will go like this. It is not clear even then. So, it is a three dimensional curve by using a single bar the lateral tie will be connected like this and it has got uh, an advantage of uh, giving 5 percent extra strength because of its confinement. So, that is there of course, it is uh, only used for the heavy loaded columns. So, that is helical tie and the assumptions made in the design of axially loaded short column the main assumption is this compressive strain in the concrete in axial compression is 0 0.002 and the plane sections remain plane in compression. Design stress strain curve of steel in compression is taken to be the same as in tension and the expression to find the design compressive strength of a column is this. So, P u is equal to this is lateral ties it is not a lateral 2 P u is equal to 0.4 times of F C K into A C plus 0.67 times of F Y into A C and this part is contributed by the concrete in the column and this part is contributed by the steel in the column. So, this will give you the strength by the concrete and this will give the strength by the steel. Again strength is nothing but the load carrying capacity. So, this is let me say this is load and this is the stress into area, it is very simple to remember. So, from the basic definition stress is equal to load by area, from that load is equal to stress into area. So, stress in the column or concrete, stress in the concrete is equal to 0.4 times of F C K and as you all know F C K is the characteristic compressive strength of the concrete that depends on the grade of concrete and A C is nothing but the area of concrete. So, stress in the concrete multiplied by the area of the concrete one mechanical property, one geometrical property and stress into area will give you the load or strength by the concrete it is there in the column. And again this is 0 0.67 times of F y into A c, this is stress in steel or yield stress in steel and this is area of steel. So, again area into stress will give you the load. So, this is the load or the strength by the steel and this is the strength by the concrete. So, these two combined will give you the strength of a column. So, this expression is very easy to remember. So, strength of the design axial compressive strength of the column P u is equal to that to short column is equal to 0.4 F C K A C plus 0.67 F Y A C. This you have to remember and all these expressions are available in your um, IS code book as well as in the handbook or structural engineers handbook that you are uh, following in the classroom. And load carrying capacity of the spiral column, spiral column means with the helical ties code permits 5 percent increase in its load carrying capacity and because of the confinement uh, developed by the helical tie, the strength of the column is increased by 5 percent and therefore, this expression that is the previous expression, this expression is multiplied by 1.05 times. So, this is equal to P u is equal to 1.05, this 1.05 is nothing but the 5 percent increase. So, 1.05 into 0 0.4 F C K A C plus 0 0.67 F Y A C. And however, the ratio of the volume of helical reinforcement to the volume of core shall not be less than the expression given in the hand I mean code book 0 0.36 AG divided by ACC minus 1. So, if you want to write that in a uh, formula way then this is nothing but volume of helical reinforcement and one is missing per pitch length divided by volume of 
core concrete per pitch length shall not be less than sorry shall not be less than and this is to be rubbed off 0.36 ag divided by acc minus 1 and now design procedure and it is very simple to design a short axially loaded RCC column and in this chapter we are going to deal with only short columns with axial load and the other type of column based on the slenderness ratio is long column. Design of long column is not included in the syllabus as such. So, we are going to design a RCC short column subjected to axial loads. So, the procedure is this the minimum percentage of steel is 0.8 percent of grass area and the maximum is 6 percent. So, you can one can assume the minimum percentage of steel between 0.8 to 4 percent. So, usually it is a assumed as 1 percent to 2 percent of AG grass area of the column. Then from that area of concrete is found. Then with these two values substituting these two values in the design strength of the short axially loaded column expression P u is equal to 0.4 F C K A C plus 0.67 F I A S C. One can get the grass area of the column from the grass area of the column find out the side or the diameter based on the shape. After arriving at the size and the diameter or the diameter find the actual area of the column from that find the area of main steel from the area of main steel assume the diameter of the bar and find out the number of bars. This is for the main steel and for the lateral ties diameter of course, it is given in the code as well as the pitch is also prescribed in the code follow the procedure or provisions given in the code and find out the diameter and the pitch of the lateral ties. So, for the design of short axially loaded column the answer should be size of the column main area of steel in the form of uh, I mean in terms of diameter and number of bars and lateral ties in terms of diameter and pitch. And of course, this column is to be checked for the other parameters namely slenderness ratio and eccentricity etcetera. We will see the worked out examples in the next session. Thank you, thank you for watching this video.